Stand by, recording in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, and welcome back to EHC TV. I'm David Eldridge. And I'm Cam Durr. It's been a rainy couple of weeks at Emory and Henry, and it doesn't look like it's lightening up anytime soon. That's for sure, Cam. And I think Emory is officially living up to the title of being a wet campus at this point. <laughs> the ducks don't seem to mind the new residence halls, but I just keep thinking it is a shame that the swim team had to leave for ODEX when we could have just hosted them here on campus. But mentioning sports, it seems like a lot of outdoor sports have been moved inside because of all the rain. Um, is that affecting any other? Luckily, um, that doesn't affect men's basketball at all. Um, and speaking of men's basketball, I have head coach Ben Thompson on set with us today for an interview. Who you got? Very exciting. On yeah, uh, I have Olivia Jesse, the president of ASL Club, which is fitting since um, EHGTV is touting with you know inclusion and dialogue subtitles uh, for all of our recordings. So hard of hearing people or even deaf viewers can still enjoy EHC TV. Um, let's hand it over to Candace Baylor with today's news update. Welcome to EHC TV news update. I'm Candace Baylor and here are this week's headlines. This past Saturday, the heating and cooling system was repaired in Van Dyke Hall. As part of the repairs, gas supply to the building for cooking had to be turned off causing Sodexo, the food provider for the college, to find alternative dining options for students. Repairs have been completed and all food options are now open and fully functioning. The Emory Henry College Police is conducting a student conduct release related issue. Details are still limited at this time, but Dean of Students Ryan Boyer tells EACTV that the suspected student involved in the incident is currently not allowed on campus. Boyer tells us that it's important for students to update and check their Live Safe app to receive information about emergency news related to the college. Students, faculty, and staff arrived on campus Monday to a widespread power outage across campus. Offices, resident halls reported a mix of loss of power and internet. Offices in the King Center found one office without power and the office next door with no power issues. The campus radio station 90.7 FM was off air until 6 p.m. Classes at the college were on a normal schedule. Finally, a belated happy birthday to one of the longest serving employees at Emory Henry. Last Thursday, February 6th, Sodexo hosted a 85th birthday celebration of Chef Wiley Thompson. Known as has been the mastermind behind Fried Chicken Wednesdays. He is known as someone who is a student center food services professional. Happy birthday to Chef Wiley from the entire EAC TV crew. That's all the news for this week. I'm Candace Baylor. Next, David Eldridge will have our future interview. Hi, I'm joined here with Olivia Jesse, the president of ASL Club, which of course stands for American Sign Language Club, yeah. and a sophomore here at Emory and Henry. Well, with the club up and running now for at least a couple of weeks, almost near a month? Mm -hmm. Close to, yeah, about three weeks we've been going strong. We missed a meeting last week, but we've, I think we've had six or seven. This weather, yeah, makes sense. How would you gauge the success of it so far? I would say eyes. to be three weeks in fairly successful. We have roughly 28 students um, on the roster. We have regularly about anywhere from 18 to 24 coming in regularly. So I think that's pretty good to be a startup club on campus. That's definitely sure. a good sign. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would you say when you, because you're fairly fluent in sign language, being the president and one of the leaders of the club, mm -hmm. what was your sort of initial reason for getting involved in learning sign language and not only learning it yourself but then teaching it to others right um well i started originally losing my hearing when i was around five years old after a surgery that i had had and then i got hearing aids actually right after high school i had just pretty much laid it down ignored it i started learning high or um, sign language in high school um got engaged with the deaf community um started learning about the culture aspect of it and got really into it, but mostly just a hard of hearing student, just 
trying to gain more fluency, but not sort quite there. Sort of a necessity yet. for yes, you there. Yes, eventually, I, I guess so, yes, it will be. Yeah, yeah, and you were mentioning that you've got involved in deaf culture and have deaf friends yourself, Yes, if I got that right. What, um, when you're hanging out around this area, because you're from Southwest Virginia, if yes. I have that correct, mm -hmm. um, what is the chances you run into someone, if you're out with your deaf friend, or even by yourself, that knows ASL, or at least knows the etiquette for interacting with a hard of hearing or deaf person? I would say rare. Um, mm -hmm. Occasionally, we will have people, if we are eating in a restaurant, though, a waiter or waitress will try to say small phrases, which is really nice, and she gets really excited about it. But um, for the most part, it's, I probably run into a deaf person around Southwest Virginia maybe once or twice a year. It's not that common around here, but you go into bigger cities and it's definitely more prominent. A frequent thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one question I had for you was when you came to Emory & Henry, were you surprised, well with you know Inclusion and Dialogue Center and what mm -hmm. we touted about that, that there wasn't already an ASL club started here? I don't know if I was necessarily surprised, I think deaf culture kind of gets left out of that conversation a lot of yeah. times, um, but the deaf population is growing exponentially in this country, so I think it is something to start kind of integrating onto campuses, and this was kind of my baby last year, and I tried to get it to take off, and now, thanks to Professor Ramju, we finally have the club, so that's really exciting. That's awesome, and you've been mentioning a lot about deaf culture, and I know one of the goals of this is not only to learn and practice sign language, or American mm -hmm. Sign Language, but also to learn about deaf culture. What, for people who might not be you know, educated in deaf culture, what exactly does that entail? Yeah, I think just with, with any introduction to a new culture, you have do's and don'ts, particularly when it comes to language and mm -hmm. um, just small things, making eye contact and not talking loudly when you encounter a deaf person, just small, small things that, um, that as they're learning the language, I also want to make sure that when they do encounter somebody who is deaf or hard of hearing and want to use their sign language, that they're not being um, harsh or, in any, or offensive in any way, mm -hmm. you know, on accident. So that's super important to me too. Because I frequently, I struggled with that. It was small do's and don'ts that I would do that my deaf friends would correct me. Catch you on. Yes, yeah. which is helpful. Yeah. So like you're mentioning, making eye contact, yes. not you know being over expressive with the signs, mm -hmm. just yeah. simple things, small things, and communicating with people mm -hmm. regularly. Yes, that are important. But just yeah. like a hearing person. Yeah, yeah. Um, another question I had was, so in the modern society where technology is very prevalent, everyone has a phone, some way to type out a message of some sort. Is there still a necessity for ASL with translating apps and or? you know, typing out messages and right. reading, in um, your opinion. I think that case could be made for any foreign language. Um, I think, you know, having those interpersonal communications and being able to sit face to face and talk with somebody in their language is still really important, no matter if it is American Sign Language or Spanish or French or, you know, whatever it is. Um, kind of that globalization of knowing English is nice and having that technology to be able to to translate what you want to say, but also it's nice to encounter somebody that, that knows your language. Definitely, and for encouraging people to get involved in ASL Club, besides just learning sign language, would you say going out of your way to learn sign language aids in other skills? Because I know a lot of communication, just in general with hearing or non-hearing, is all body language, like yeah. 70, 80 percent. Do you think learning sign language helps make people more expressive? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it also improves with a lot of public speaking skills. Being able to sit in front of somebody and be expressive with your face and your body language is also incredibly helpful. So yeah. for your mass comm majors, your business majors, I get a lot of those. Um, we're a great group of people too. We have people from all different walks of life and yeah, those are definitely skills that can be, can be improved there too. Definitely, definitely. Well, I appreciate you meeting me here for the interview. Thanks for having and, um, me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like we're signing off here with Olivia and tossing it over to Luke for the sports update. Hello, I'm Luke Montalbano bringing you this week's sports update. Let's start with the men's basketball team. Last Wednesday, the men's team hosted Roanoke College in an ODAC men's basketball matchup. Colin Molden has the ball and with a nice bounce pass to Jake Martin for two points, Molden finished the game with nine assists and Martin finishes the game with ten points. On the next possession, Dylan Thomas dribbles around and finds his teammate Ethan Rowan for a two-hand slam. This helped build Roanoke's lead up to 22 points early in the first half. On defense, Micah Banks gets the steal and he goes coast to coast and finds the basket to get the and one. 
Banks finishes the game with 10 points. Coach Thompson there will be on set later on with Cam Durr. Later on in the game, Colin Molden steps back, crosses up his defender, and hits a three in the defender's face. The Wasps will end up winning the game by a final score of 78-77 to to improve to two wins in the ODAC and five wins overall. The women's team are currently 11-3 in the ODAC and currently third in the standings. They will host Roanoke College tomorrow night in their Play for K game. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. The baseball team opened their season on Sunday at Berry College and lost both games 7-4. The softball team traveled to Montreat College in an exhibition series and won both games. They will open their season on Friday that against 15th nationally ranked Birmingham Southern College. The swimming team finished their season this weekend at the ODAC Championships in Greensboro. The men's team finished in 7th place while the women's team finished in 6th. That will do it for this week's sports update. I'm Luke Montalbano. Let's throw it over to Cam Durr for this week's sports interview. Hi, and welcome to this week's sports interview. Today I have head men's basketball coach, Coach Ben Thompson. Coach, thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem. Um, so you're a new coach this year. Um, you brought in six new guys, and your overall record is 5-17. and 17. You, Would you say that this year is kind of a rebuilding year for the program? I mean, I think a lot of people would say that. Uh, you know, I, I'm just trying to, to build up a culture of uh, accountability and, um, you know, help grow and move the program forward. And so that's what we're focused on this year. And uh, we faced a ton of adversity, uh, maybe more than anybody in the country. And uh, the fact that we still have a chance to make the conference tournament and that our guys are still playing so hard, I think is a testament to, to what we're building. And um, to add on to some of that adversity, I know you guys have just been hit with tons of injuries, some sicknesses, um, some people quitting and everything like that. Um, but that Roanoke game is a super high intensity game, come from behind win um, with only eight guys on the bench. Do you think that's kind of a testament to the hard work that you guys have put in this season? Yeah, I think so. And I keep telling people it, been, it had been building. Um, you know, we played WNL uh, really close and, and really well, and they're receiving votes for the top 25. We were uh, on the road and beating Randolph Macon by nine, who's the number three team in the country. And so it had kind of been building. Uh, and so we had seen it. It wasn't a surprise to us, you know, maybe to, to outsiders uh, it was. But, you know, I just started the game and told our guys, you know, get down 17 to 1 and be down 22. You know, we, we planned it that way, right? Uh, no, you never plan it that way. But, um, you know, our guys just kept battling. And, and I remember distinctly uh, there was a timeout at the 615 mark. And I think we were down by 18 or 20 at that point. And I just told our guys, you know, just chip away at it, be down 10 or 12 at halftime. And, they cut it to 12, and then uh, we had a nice conversation in the locker room, and uh, guys came out and battled and competed, and we took the lead, I think, with about 13 and a half to go in the second half, and um, you know, we're able to hold on for the win. So with that being said, would you say that your overall record is not reflecting the way that you guys are playing? Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not too focused on what our overall record is. What I am focused on is getting better every day. And I think our guys are doing that. You know, we've had some setbacks. Uh, we're down to six healthy bodies at one point uh, this week. Um, but, uh, you know, we're focusing on each practice each day on, on getting better. And, uh, you know, I told our guys this and it's true. I, I know a lot of coaches in the league that, you know, if we can get into this, this uh, ODAC tournament, uh, there's a lot of teams that do not want to play us right now. And, and so, uh, you know, it's a testament to our guys and how hard they're, they're battling and fighting right now. Um, and what are some positives that you've taken away just from being here at Emory and coaching these guys this season? Yeah, I mean, Emory and Henry's a special place. I've known that since I was a kid. Uh, my first basketball camp was here. Uh, somewhere on campus, I still have a, uh, a time capsule buried somewhere near the McLaughlin Center. I don't know if they buried it up. I'll have to see if maybe we can get Brent to find it. Um, but, uh, but I know how special of a place Emory and Henry is, and uh, our guys have, have really battled and, and competed, and, and people have stood by us. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, when you go through a season like this, you're forced to play a lot of young guys. Uh, and so uh, in practice, I've been telling our guys, you know, you're not freshmen anymore. You've played the minutes of guys that are sophomores or, or juniors. And so they've had to probably grow up quicker than, than what we wanted them to, but I think it bodes well for the future. So three games left in the season, the regular season, and um, you still are fighting for the chance to go to ODAX. What do you hope to accomplish in these last few games and moving forward? 
Yeah, hopefully to get better, to continue uh, moving that needle. Uh, and, you know, we want to get in the tournament. And, you know, once you're in, everybody's zero, zero. They seed it, but uh, it doesn't really matter what your record is. And so I think if we can get into the tournament, I think that we can, we can do some damage. I mean, you know, the number one seed that's undefeated in, in our league is Randolph-Macon, and we're up nine points at their place. Uh, you know, and led for 15, 16 minutes of those games, and, and we'd love to see them again. Uh, but I like the matchups with some of the teams that are higher in our league. So uh, nobody scares us. We're not going to back down from anybody, uh, but we're going to battle to get in the tournament. And then uh, I can tell you nobody wants to play Emory and Henry at this point. I, um, I spoke with you preseason, um, and you said that you were cautiously optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, do you still feel the same way? Yeah. I mean, We've had a lot of things happen. So, uh, you know, you, you can ask my wife. I'm a little bit more of an optimist. Um, you know, hope springs eternal, all that stuff. Uh, but uh, I always try to see the silver lining and the positive things. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of basketball left in this team. Awesome. I wish you guys the best of luck. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Stingers up. <laughs> That's all for this week's sports interview. I'm Camder. David, really interesting interview you had with Olivia. I had no idea that we had sparked an ASL club on campus. Yeah, well, you know, I've been attending a little bit here every Mondays and Fridays from 5 to 6. It's a great time and a good bunch of people as well. Very exciting interview you had with Coach Thompson. I really liked how he was talking about being optimistic. And while it's important, it's not all about the numbers on the board. It's about the work ethic and what you're doing in between the games. Yes, and he really understands that. And I thought that he had a really optimistic view. Um, for the record that shows yeah. their seasons. Yeah. Well, a lot of hard work being put in there. Students all across campus. Um, speaking of campus, I hope everyone stays dry these upcoming weeks. And that's it for EHC TV. Signing off. <laughs>